Hi, happy Friday. I hope that you're doing good. Thank you for being here on time. Thank you, Carlos, Roberto, Mario, Marilyn, Hazel, Janet, Carla, Victor, and Christina. Thank you for being on time. And um, how was your Friday? Any plans for a weekend? Do you have a good Friday? How was yes. Oh, you did? Yes. Anything I... interesting? Excuse me? Did you do anything interesting? No. No? No. Just a good day. <laughs> a good day. Yes. Okay. It's Friday. It's Friday. Friday, yes, the Friday mood, right? Yes. Okay. I'm sleepy. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, same here. <laughs> <laughs> I was yeah. like that the whole morning. <laughs> <laughs> Any plans for tomorrow or for Sunday? Um, no, I, I'm going to shoot them on Sunday. Oh. Mm, going shopping. Yes. I love shopping. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's nice. Okay, so we're going to start. I have 10 people connected here. So we're going to start with the class. And uh, I already shared the presentation with you. And uh, in the morning, I shared the list of birds. Did you check it? ¿Le dieron una leidita a la lista de verbos? ¿Escucharon el audio? Ok. No, teacher, acabo de entrar y trabajar. Ok. Well, maybe later you will have chance. Maybe luego tengan un chancecito para que la revisen y lo practiquen. Um, So, si esos verbos son bien comunes, les pueden servir bastante. Um, so, así que pues ya tienen ahí eso para que eh, practiquen un poquito más. Sobre todo porque son los verbos irregulares. Y pues eso es como su nombre lo dice, pues son irregulares, no sirven una, no siguen una regla que podamos decir, ah, solo hay que poner, sino que lo único que se puede hacer con ellos es memorizarlos. Y yo sé que a este punto nosotros, bueno, hay compromisos de trabajo, compromisos familiares, etcétera, que no nos permiten como sentarnos y dedicarle tiempo a estar memorizando una lista de verbos. Lo mejor que pueden hacer es practicar. Tal vez eh, usar cinco diarios, memorizarse cinco cada día. Ustedes eh, podrán ponerse una meta, ¿verdad? Luego de memorizarlos, hacer oraciones utilizando esos verbos, etc. Así es que pues ahí está la idea. Y vamos a empezar ahora con un pequeño repaso del pasado de B. Porque pues, pues es parte de nuestro material de Insaport. So... This is on page 40. It says, use the past of B to talk about situations in the past. And it says that for the person I, he, she, it, we're going to use was. And then for we, they, and you, we're going to use were. Okay. So, esto ya lo habíamos visto. Y recuerden, eh, si es el pasado de cero estar. Was y where significan lo mismo, cero estar en pasado, pero dependerá de, de qué persona sea para que decir vamos a usar was o where. Y acá nos indica para qué personas usamos was, para qué personas usamos where. Eh, sé que ya hicieron un, un buen trabajo con esto, nada más recuerden que es pasado simple y que pues eh, el verbo be es como... Digamos, él no necesita auxiliares. No, no va el did como auxiliar acá, sino que was y were es todo lo que ocupamos. Cuando sea oración negativa, usamos not después de, después de was o were. Wasn't, weren't y ya tenemos negativa. No usamos didn't. Solamente agregamos not. 
después de was and were para hacer una negación. Como vemos los ejemplos acá, it was not difficult or it wasn't difficult. We were, we were not unwilling to help or we weren't unwilling to help. Any questions so far? No hay preguntas hasta acá. Okay. Uh, so now the next exercise, aquí hay, hay una mezcla. Um, veo hay algunas preguntas que van con el pasado de be, algo otras con otros verbos. So the exercise here is to read the paragraph and answer the questions. Is there a volunteer to read the paragraph? Hi, teacher. Thank you so much. Mm. This is Mary. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mary went to a training in Guatemala last Tuesday. The training was interesting because she learned how to fix the equipment she used and how to prevent damage on it. The presenter was really helpful and he clarified all doubts Doubt. mm -hmm. that Mary had. He used a computer to present samples during the speech. Excellent. Thank you so much for reading. Now, we have six questions about that paragraph. Number one. How was the training? Number two, when was the training? Number three, did you like it? Number four, what did you learn? Number five, was the presenter helpful? And number six, did he use examples? So I'll give you a couple of minutes for you to answer these six questions. Remember that we have uh, most of the information here in the paragraph so that you can answer them. For example, the first one, it says, how was the training? So the answer will be, esta no es una yes, no question. Hay que dar información. Hay una WH word primero. How? How was the training? Como estuvo? How was the training? According to this, so you can answer, it was interesting. Or you can uh, say the training was interesting. And so on. I'll give you some time.
Okay, let us check. Question number two, a volunteer. When was the training? When was the training? The training was last Tuesday. Excellent. Thank you, Thank you so much. Number three, did you like it? And in this one, uh, I think uh, I can infer that yes, as she liked it. So, um, because it, she said it, the training was interested, um, because she learned how to pick the equipment, etc. So, I think that the answer could be yes, I did. Como dice, did you like it? Es como le están preguntando. You like it? Yes, I did. That could be so that's kind of confusing here. But number four, what did you learn? Ahí es como que si somos Mary, tenemos que contestar como si somos Mary, quien fue al training. Y decir, I. So the answer would be I. Uh -huh. I learned how to fix the equipment. Excellent. Yes, I learned how to fix the equipment. Thank you so much. Uh, was the presenter help? Uh, so the answer here can be yes, he was or she was, we, we don't know. So you can write down here, she, yes, he was. No, oh, yes, she was. Uh, did he, well, it says he, did he use examples? Uh-huh, he used a computer to present examples during the speech. So the answer here would be. Yes. He did. Excellent. Okay, then we have this conversation and uh, we continue using the simple pass of it and um, we do not have audios for this one, but I'm going to read it for you and you can practice at home. Okay, we have Hank and Eric. Let's just do. All right. Hi, Eric. Did you buy this spare part for the Zoom machine? Yes, I did, Robert. The price was $78. Okay, I need the evaluation of the product. Of the new product. That's right. It will be ready tomorrow. Great. Did you order it online or did you buy it downtown? Yes, I want to get it by myself downtown. How is the customer service? It was nice as usual. 
Okay, we are done with this part. Have you find anything new here? Maybe vocabulary or pronunciation? Spare. Uh, spare part, spare es repuesto. Okay. Uh -huh. Es una parte de repuesto. Igual si um, la llanta de repuesto que usualmente uno anda o debe de andar en el carro se llama spare tire. Todo lo que sea de repuesto es spare. Spare tire, spare part. Uh -huh. El de downtown. ¿Qué significa? No me acuerdo ya. Eh, centro. Oh, ok. El centro. Uh -huh. Ok. Thank you so much for your questions. We are going to create a, the breakout room. So you can practice this conversation. Just give me one second to stop sharing and create the breakout rooms. But before that, I'm going to allow you to share the screen. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, there you go. Hello. Hello. Hola. Hola. Estoy descargando el PDF. A mí creo que ya se me descargó, solo déjeme verificar si puedo compartir. Ok. Era Eric y Hank, ¿verdad? Sí, creo que es él. Esta era, ¿verdad? Sí, sí. Solo repasamos la conversación. Sí, repasar la conversación. Vaya. Somos tres. Si gusta, empezamos nosotros y luego nos turnamos con Melas. Ok. Yo voy a hacer Hank ahorita. Ok. Hi, Eric. Did you buy the spare part for the swing mechanic? Ah, no, machine, perdón. Machine. Sorry. <laughs> yes, I did, Robert. The price was $78. $78. Okay, I need the evaluation of the product. Of the new product? That's right. It will be ready tomorrow. Great. Did you order it online? Or did you buy it downtown? Yes, I went to get it by, by myself downtown. How was the customer service? It was nice, as usual. <laughs> okay. Ahora yo, Hank. <clears throat> Mel Melanie, Eric, o yo soy Eric? Ah, espérame, espérame. Melanie. Hola, hola, sí. Si gusta practicar con Melanie, después practicamos otra vez. No, o sí. Ah, pues entonces Melanie, tú se Hank, entonces. Ok. Eh, hi, Eric. Did you buy the spare part for the sewing machine? Yes, I did, Robert. The price was 78. 
Okay, and I need the of the of, of the new product. That's right. I will be read more. I just, no, I just want to study. <laughs> ah, perdón, perdón. <laughs> it will be ready tomorrow. Great, great. Did you order it online? Online. Or did you want you buy it downtown? Yes, I want to get it by myself to downtown. Oh, oh, what the customer service? It was nice as usual. Okay. Si gusta practicar usted con Janet ahorita, no sé si solo somos tres o más. Eh, Mar Marilyn está ahí, pero no sé si si si, si está de oyente. Sí, uh -huh. sí, estoy. Ah, está hablando que anda algo más uh -huh. de la sí, sí, solo que lo no es que se anda pegando ahorita, no, si yo, yo para eso voy otra vez, no, ya estoy recayendo. Ay, no. ¿Y puede practicar más bien o no? Sí, 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 no hay problema. Hi, Eric, did you buy the expert uh, part for the safety machine? Yes, I did, Robert. Price was 78. Okay. Hi, Eric. Did you buy the spare part for the saving machine? Yes, I did, Robert. The price was $78. Okay, I need the production of the product. Of the new product? That's right. It will be ready tomorrow? Right. Did you did you order it online? Did you buy in downtown? Yes, I went to get it by myself downtown. How was the customer service? It was nice as usual. <laughs> Hi Eric, did you buy the spare part for the swimming machine? Yes, I did, Robert. The price was $78. Okay, I need the evolution of the product. Of the new product? That's right. It will be ready tomorrow. Great. Did you order it online? Or did you buy it downtown? Yes. I went to get it by myself downtown. How was the customer service? It was nice as usual. Okay, uh, you did a very good job with this conversation. I only heard a couple of words that were misspelled. And um, let's see. Well, it's here, it's downtown. Downtown. And then the last one is usual. Remember? Usual. And that's it. You did it nice. Thank you, teacher. You're welcome. See you in the main section.
Okay, so now that you've practiced the conversation, and I think what well, we have 17, so I can check attendance right now, and then we will continue developing the topics for today. Um, Abele de Nilsson. Abel Edenilson. Abigail Elizabeth. Gracias, Abel. Ya vi que escribió en el chat. Eh, Abigail Elizabeth. Present teacher. Okay, thank you. Valmori Alexander. Present teacher. Thank you. Carlos Emilio. Present teacher. Thank you. Yes. Y Carlos Humberto. Present teacher. Thank you. Cecilia Noemi. Present teacher. Okay, thank you. Francisco Ernesto. Teacher escribió que iba a estar de oyente porque está trabajando. Sí, es cierto. Gracias. Y me, me parece que vi en el WhatsApp también. Ok, gracias. Aquí ponemos, ahí está conectado Francisco también. Ok, gracias. Um, Hazel. Present. Thank you. Julissa Yamilet. Julissa Yamilet. Carla Daniela. Yulisa y Carla no está ninguna de las dos. Ok. Uh, Carla Ivania, aquí veo que escribe en el chat. Thank you, Carla. Carla Lorena. Present. Thank you. Y Marilyn Alejandra. Present. Thank you, Marilyn. Mario Ernesto. Present. Thank you. Melanie Alexandra. Present. Thank you. Melissa Esther. Melissa Esther. Ok, gracias Melissa, ya vi que escribió en el chat. Um, Mirna y Anet. Present teacher. Thank you. Roberto Emilio. Ok, Roberto, thank you so much. Escribió en el chat también. Eh, Santos, Cristina. Present teacher. Thank you, Cristina. And uh, Noé. Creo que no está. O oh, sí. Víctor no, ¿eh? Ok, gracias, Víctor. Ya escribió en el chat. Ok. So, um, ok, um, I saw, um, vi que ya les mandaron mensaje que ya van a empezar las inscripciones para que vayan a preintermedio uno. Eh, vamos a tratar, ¿verdad?, de conectarnos las dos horas, estos últimos días que faltan para que eh, lleguen al mismo. La mayoría llegará a por lo menos al 80 o lo va a pasar. Y hay algunos que sí, ya creo que les estuvieron escribiendo, ¿verdad? Son pocos los que pues están casi que, que si faltan un su minutito tal vez les vaya a afectar. Así que traten de conectarse las últimas clases, por lo menos las dos horas completas. Eh, solamente pueden escribir si van en tráfico, si van en camino, si están en el trabajo y por eso no pueden hablar. Pero lo importante es que se conecten, ¿verdad? Y que no dejen saber que, que si están por ahí pero no pueden participar. ¿Verdad? Eh, vamos a ver. 
I'll share the screen again. Um, and we have the conversation. And it says, um, we have three questions here. What did Eric need to buy? What was the, pra the price of the product? And how was the customer service at the store? All that information was in the conversation that you just practiced. So we can answer these three questions and then we will check. I'll give you a couple of minutes. The swinging machine. Okay, yes. Christina wrote for number one. What did Eric need to buy? The spare part for the sewing machine. Excellent. And number two, what was the price of the product? 78. Uh-huh, excellent. It was 78. And how was the customer service at the store? He said it was a nice and usual. Uh-huh. Okay, he was it was nice as usual. Um, right, good. Thank you so much for your participations and for your answers. They were all correct, so you did it great. Now, um, I included this chart just to illustrate uh, how do we form the yes, no questions um, with the verb be in past. Remember, that's the topic that we are studying. And then the next exercise, we are going to need the structure. El siguiente ejercicio es hacer yes, no questions con el pasado de be. Eh, esto ya pues habíamos visto en estos días anteriormente cuál es la estructura y acá pues está ilustrado de una manera bastante eh, um, amigable para entenderle. So, aquí está cuando hacemos una oración primero va el sujeto y después el verbo be they were happy por ejemplo una oración afirmativa. Pero para hacer just no questions, solo cambiamos el orden de estas dos palabritas. El verbo va a ir al inicio. En este caso es were. Y luego el sujeto, que es they. Were they happy? Ajá. Uh -huh. Estaban ellos felices. The remember es ser o estar. Y dependerá del sujeto. Vamos a poner was o were. En este caso es were porque el sujeto son ellos, ¿verdad? Were they happy? Y también discutíamos cómo hacer las short answers. Yes, they were. O no, they weren't. Eh, y aquí tenemos un ejemplo con was. Ok. Um, was John late for work? Uh, according to the picture, yes, he was. So remember, we use was or I. He. He, it, in singular, okay? In this case, John is he. Cuando es John es él, entonces por eso se utilizó was en esa pregunta. Luego tenemos más ejemplos acá en el costado derecho de su pantalla. Sample questions. Was I correct? Was I early? Yes, you were. No, you weren't. Uh, were you busy yesterday? Yes, I was. Or no, I wasn't. Were you cold last night? Yes, I was. Or no, I wasn't. 
Were you and John ready? Yes, we were. Oh, no, we weren't. Were you both embarrassed? Yes, we were. No, we weren't. Uh, were they hungry? Yes, they were. No, they weren't. Were Mike and Jack worried? Yes, they were. Oh, no, they weren't. Eso es para que eh, recuerden cómo pues se va ajustando, ¿verdad? Las respuestas dependiendo que el, el sujeto, ¿verdad? Eh, así se va eh, jugando. Pues aquí, por ejemplo, es Were you and John? ¿Estabas tú y John listo? Eh, Uh, fueron tú, uh, fueron ambos uh, avergonzados. So, yes, we were. Okay, you and John, y se lo están preguntando a ellos dos. Entonces, yes, we were. En este dice, um, uh, was he, was she, Steve, so he was, porque Steve es un he, so yes, he was. No, he wasn't. So, you see. Y vamos a usar siempre el mismo verbo o auxiliar con el que se nos esté haciendo la pregunta. En este caso, estamos trabajando con was y con were. Entonces, no metemos el, el did en ninguna parte, ¿verdad? Porque es como dos cosas eh, separadas, ¿no? El, el verbo be se separa de los demás verbos que vimos un poquito en estos días. Entonces, es solo como un review para recordar cómo va la estructura. Y ahora sí, en la página 42. It says, use the past of B to ask questions about situations in the past. And we have the structure here. It says B. En este caso, B sería was over, ¿verdad? Entendiendo eso porque estamos trabajando en pasado simple. Uh, was, were, and then subject, then complement, and finally the question mark. Ok. Y tenemos algún par de ejemplos aquí. Was the training interesting? Were all the employees at the conference? Y la forma corta de contestar que pues eh, ya lo habíamos eh, discutido en la en slide anterior. And then, uh, the exercise five is to read the following services and write questions to evaluate them using simple pass and pass of B. Okay. Uh, it's, it's a simple pass and pass of B. Okay. What is a simple pass? Es que podemos preguntar con cualquier verbo y ahí sí va a ir auxiliar did, si es necesario, o didn't. Eh, y si es pasado de B, pues con eso, con was o con were. But we do not combine them together. Eh, then we have to ask the questions to a classmate. And we have um, the two services. The first one says, on November 1st, I bought a spare part for the printer at Spare ES. The price was $300. The brand was read well. The customer service was great because we received all the information we needed. Oh, 300 for a spare part for a printer. It's too much, but anyways. <laughs> uh, on January 2nd, I bought the reads part that were requested. The price was $30 each and then were installed in the sewing machine. The machine was working properly. So now we have to write some questions about the service that we will um, ask later to a classmate. We have some other exercises that are similar. Tenemos otros ejercicios similares a esto. Entonces, aquí podríamos hacer algún par de preguntas. Eh, pero bueno, son dos servicios diferentes. Y solo tenemos información de qué es lo que se compró y cuál era el precio. Mm, en uno dice 
sí da información de cómo fue el servicio al cliente, pero en el otro no. So, um, I think that we can skip this one. Podemos eh, dejarlo para pues que ustedes lo trabajen cuando ya tengan algún chancecito. Eh, y pues movernos a eh, lo siguiente, ¿verdad? Porque también aquí pueden preguntar con el pasado de B o con lo otro que estuvimos viendo ayer. Entonces, eso es solo para que tengan eh, la idea bien clara de cómo hacer ese ejercicio. Pero pues tenemos la otra parte del pasado simple, que ahí ya no es cero estar, ¿verdad? Sino que ya son otros verbos, que cocinar, eh, a montar, eh, correr, jugar, etc. Y eh, lo que decíamos es que ahí sí usamos el auxiliar did para las just no questions, ¿ok? Ahí no van a empezar con was o con where porque no vamos a preguntar nada relacionado a ser o estar, eh, sino cualquier otro verbo que no sea ser o estar. Y siendo ese el caso, entonces vamos a usar did al principio para hacer una yes no question. Luego del did, el sujeto, y luego el verbo decíamos va a ir en simple, porque ya tenemos el auxiliar indicando pasado, entonces el verbo se queda simple. Y pues luego complemento y al final el signo de pregunta. Y tenemos acá el ejemplo. Did you have a good summer? Yes, I did. Punto. I had a great summer. Eh, ahí sí ya está conjugándose el verbo pasado porque pues es una oración nueva y es una oración afirmativa. o so, Cuando estamos haciendo oraciones afirmativas no hay auxiliares que indiquen el tiempo. Entonces... Si sí, eh, llevamos el verbo a pasado en estos casos. Eh, esto lo tienen ahí en la, en, la, en la presentación y era lo que les decía que podían avanzarlo. No sé si alguien avanzó y ya lo completó. El silencio dice que no. Ok. So, no worries if you didn't do it. I know that it's probably, uh, probablemente no hay tiempo libre. La verdad que hay muchas cosas que hacer durante el día. Entonces, let me see. I'm going to share the audio with you so that you can listen to it. And we will do the exercise here together. Yes, let me get to the correct page. I think it was like 90 something. Oh, here I have it. Okay, I'm going to share with you. And we will complete this exercise together. Come on, one minute or less. Here it is. Mm -hmm. Oh God, what did I make it bigger for you? And there we go. Okay, let's see. Let's start with the audio of the grammar focus. And uh, I'm going to play this audio, but it is blue, light blue square, and you can repeat at home. And then we're going to uh, complete the exercise A together. Page 95, Exercise 8, Grammar Focus. Simple past yes-no questions. Did you have a good summer? Yes, I did. I had a great summer. Did you ride a bicycle? No, I didn't. I rode a horse. Did Erica like her vacation? Yes, she did. She liked it a lot.
Did Erica and her sister go to Colorado? No, they didn't. They went to Arizona. Okay, so that was the audio. Now let's try to uh, complete what is missing here. So in the first one, did you have a good summer? And the answer would be, yes, I? Yes, I did. I did. I did, excellent. Thank you so much. So, yes, I did. I, and then I have had. H A D, right, correct. H A D. I had a great summer. I went. went. Excellent. I went to the beach a lot. Now, question number two Did you go anywhere last summer? Esa sería no, la pregunta. I no, I didn't. I didn't. Uh -huh. I didn't. I. Stay. Stayed here. Uh -huh. Stayed here. We did, right? I stayed here. I what is the pass of get? Got. Got. Uh-huh. Excellent. I got a part-time job. So I made. Made. Uh-huh. I made some extra money. Now, the question number three. Did yeah. you take? Did you talk? Did you take? Take. Ajá. Uh -huh. Ahí como es pregunta, va a ir el auxiliar did al principio y el verbo lo vamos a dejar tal cual está ahí. Did you take any classes last summer? And the answer says, yes, I did. Did. Okay. Yes, I did. I took. Took. Um, I took. Excellent. I took tennis lessons and played. Played. Excellent. Excellent. Tennis every day. And finally, the question number four. Did you speak English last summer? Excellent. And the answer, no, I? Didn't. I didn't. Uh-huh, no, I didn't. But I? Read. Mm. Uh-huh, ayer me Red. Red, excellent. <laughs> <laughs> excellent. But I read English books. And I watched. watched. Excelente. I watched English movies. Muy bien. Ajá. Uh -huh. Ok, qué bien que nos recordamos, ¿verdad? Algo de lo que vimos ayer. So, remember, el verbo este de los que se escriben igual, pero en el caso de read, cambia a red, la pronunciación en pasado. Red, like the color. Y ese es uno de los que estaban por ahí en la listita. So, espero que cuando tengan un chancecito, eh, practiquen. Hay varios verbos que parece que no cambiarán en la escritura. Hay otros que tampoco cambia la pronunciación en pasado. Y pues como les repito, ¿verdad? Estos... ¿verdad? Aquí estoy. Entonces, eso es lo único que podemos hacer con ellos es memorizarlos. No hay otra forma, porque como no siguen una regla, entonces, yes, hay que memorizarlos. Okay, um, so now I need uh, the recording of one conversation. And this is the conversation that we're going to practice. Can you see the uh, two ladies, they are talking? Okay, and uh, we see a picture here. What are they doing in this picture? What is this called? ¿Cómo se llama este deporte o pasatiempo?
¿Cómo se llama ese deporte que ven ahí en el dibujito? ¿O no se mira? Yes. Uh, yes. Okay. And what's the name of that sport? Or hobby? Ese, um, Rafting. Raft excellent. Yes, Victor. Rafting. Ese es el rafting, el que ven ahí en el, en el dibujito. So, aquí creo que le dicen rápidos, ¿verdad? En los, uh -huh. Como que se practiquen corrientes de río que llevan alguna fuerza. Esos son los rápidos que le dicen. So, um, yes, the conversation is about one of this lady's vacations. So, uh, voy a poner el audio ahorita así completo para que escuchen la conversación completa. Y pues de pronto si ven alguna palabra nueva ahí. Vemos el significado o oh, pues pronunciación. So let me play the recording. Page 95, exercise 7, conversation. Did you like it? Listen and practice. So, did you go anywhere last summer, Erica? Yes, I did. My sister and I went to Arizona. We saw the Grand Canyon. Really? Did you like it? Oh, yes. We loved it. Did you go hiking? No, we didn't. Actually, we rode horses. And one day we went whitewater rafting on the Colorado River. Wow. Did you have fun? Yes, I did. But my sister didn't like the rafting very much. Okay, that's the conversation. Do you have any question about it? No. No questions? No, teacher. Okay, good. Um, and just one thing here, I just want to check. What do you think actually means? Actually, I'm just checking. What does it mean, actually? Realmente? No. Ajá, es significado similar a decir uh, realmente o de hecho. Uh-huh. So that's good to know because uh, so I am... Um, en, en, he visto muchos casos en que se llega a niveles superiores pensando que actually significa actualmente y no. Actually es como decir de hecho o en realidad. Ajá. Um, y usualmente es como para corregir alguna información, ¿verdad? Um, por ejemplo, ella le pregunta, Laura le pregunta, did you go hiking? Entonces le dice, no, we didn't. No, no lo hicimos. De hecho, fuimos a montar caballos. We rode horses. And one day we went white wire rafting. Okay. Um, any questions? Okay. Uh, I'm going to play the recording one more time. And I'm going to um, make a short uh pause here so that you can repeat at home. First, we just listen and then repeat. Page 95, exercise 7, conversation. Did you like it? Listen and practice. So, did you go anywhere last summer, Erica? Yes, I did. My sister and I went to Arizona. We saw the Grand Canyon. Really? Did you like it? Oh, yes. We loved it.
Did you go hiking? No, we didn't. Actually, we rode horses. And one day we went whitewater rafting on the Colorado River. Wow, did you have fun? Yes, I did, but my sister didn't like the rafting very much. Well, that conversation is in the material I sent to you. So you already have that one and we're going to proceed to practice in the breakup rooms. Just let me check if you can share screen. Yes, you can. All right. Hacer. Practicar esa conversación. Sí, practicar la conversación. Okay. ¿Quién quiere empezar? Yo voy Va. a ser Laura. Usted va a ser Laura. Vale, voy a ser Erika. Ok. So, did you go anywhere last summer, Erika? Yes, I did. My sister and I went to Arizona with Side the Grand Canyon. Really? Did you like it? Oh, yes, we loved it. Did you go hiking? No, we didn't. Actually, we rode horses and one day we went quite water rafting on the Colorado River. Wow, did you have fun? Yes, I did, but my sister died during like the rafting very much. Excellent. Just one thing. Uh, road. La e no se pronuncia. Road. We road. road horses. And then sí. excellent. Pero dicho quiero ubicarme donde estamos. We qué digo? Perdón. Road. We uh, road Erica. Horses. Ajá, en el más largo. No, we didn't. Actually, we rode horses. Okay. Thanks. Ah, uh -huh, good. Vaya, si gusta empiezo yo ahora, este, hola. Sí, hola. sí, sí. Vale. Okay, yo soy Erika. Um, so, de, so did or so die? So did. Did, so did. <laughs> so did you go anywhere last summer, Erika? Yes, I did. My sister and I went to Arizona. We saw so the Grand Canyon. Okay. Really, did you like it? Oh, yes, we loved it. Did you go hiking? hiking sería. Yes, hiking. Did you, did you go hiking? No, we didn't. Actually, we rode horse. And one day, we went white water rafting on the Colorado River. Wow, did you have who? Yes, I did, but my sister didn't like the rafting very much. Okay, hoy si gusta que empiece que, que lo hagan Janet y Carlos, vea, y después Janet y Abel. Mm -hmm. It's okay. Hola, ¿me escuchan? Sí, se oye. Ah, bye. Uh, so did you go anywhere last summer, Erica? 
o yo. Mm -hmm. Yes, I did. My sister and I went to Arizona. Sigue ahí. Sí, okay. We saw the Great Canyon. Really? Did you like it? Oh, yes. We loved it. Did you go hiking? No, <laughs> oh, we didn't. Actually, we rode horses. And one day, we went to ride whitewater rafting on the Colorado River. Wow, did you have fun? Yes, I did. But my sister didn't, didn't like the rafting very much. Okay, oh. ah, sorry, si ya terminaron, ¿verdad? Uh, la river es, uh -huh, ajá, river, river. river, Colorado River. Uh -huh. Continue, you're doing it good. Bueno, hoy empieza usted, Carlos. Okay, so, did you go anywhere last summer, Erika? Yes, I did. My sister and I went to Arizona. We saw the world canyon. Really? Did you like it? Oh, yes. We loved it. Did you go hiking? Mm, no, we not, didn't. Actually, we rode horses. And one day, we went white water rafting. Oh, the Colorado River. Wow, did you have fun? Yes, I did, but my sister didn't like the fifteen very much. Okay. Comienzo yo y después. Después comienza vale. usted. Dele. Ok. So, did you go anywhere last summer, Erika? Yes, I did, Mr. Sister. Um, I went to Arizona. We say the so, Grand Canyon. Really? Did you like it? Oh, yes. We love it. Did you go hiking? No. We didn't. Didn't. Actually. Uh -huh. No, we, we didn't. Actually, we rode horse. And one day we went the with war with war rafting. On the rafting. On the Colorado ride. Okay. Well, did you have fun? Yes, I did, but my sister didn't like the rafting very much. Okay.
Okay, I think everybody is out of the breakout room. So we will continue with this exercise. It's, vamos a subir un poquito el, no tan difícil, pero es mejor así y no estar siguiendo una conversación. So we give our own information here. And we have these questions. Uh, aquí, como pueden ver, hay algunas que estaban con el pasado de be, algo otras con otros verbos. So, yes, it is a combination. And uh, we have first question. Where were you born? Number two, when was your father born? Number three, when was your mother born? Number four, when did you turn 13? Number three, five, sorry, when did you start high school? And number six, when did you begin to study English? Any question about vocabulary? Are the questions clear? Are the questions clear? No, teacher, it's clear. Okay, thank you so much for confirming. Uh, to answer these questions, we're going to use years. Vamos a estar utilizando los años para responder a estas preguntas. Y aquí tenemos algún ejemplo de cómo podemos decir los años. Habíamos dicho que se pueden decir como la, la fecha así completa, como decir 1906, que es un poquito largo, que diríamos 1906. Y la otra es dividirlo en dos números. Ya habíamos hablado eso antes. 1906. En el caso que vaya un 0 algo, um, la, la segunda cifra sea 0, 5, 0, 4, 0, 6, el 0 se pronuncia como O, así como lo ven ahí, 1906. Y ahí en los demás, pues, normal, ¿verdad? 1986, 2000, en estos casos, 2001, o podemos decir 2001. El decir N es opcional. No le, no hace nada si no se lo pone, pues por eso aparece entre paréntesis. 2001, o podemos decir 2001. 2010, or 2010, o podemos dividirlo 2010. Eh, so, eh, I think I will give you some time for you to answer those six questions about yourself. And then we will practice. Le puede dar tiempo para que respondan las seis preguntas. Eso es acerca de ustedes mismos. Ya saben, si no uh, saben la respuesta, pues hay que inventársela. Por ejemplo, la número dos. When was your father born? En mi caso, I don't know. No lo sé. Pero tiene como 70 años. Entonces podría yo calcular un año en cuando nació. I know, yo sé su cumpleaños, pero no la fecha de cuando nació. So, yes, um, me tocaría inventar el año, perdón. La fecha sí la sé. Same thing, if you do not know, you can invent. The idea is for you to practice.
finished? Are you ready? Finish. Okay, I volunteer to answer question number one. When were you born? No. Thank you, Hazen. I. I... When? Uh huh. When were you born? I were born in nineteen ninety two. Okay, so it will be I was born or I were I, born. I were born. Mm. No, <laughs> I don't know. Estaba confundido porque la pregunta está con where, entonces no sabe. Ajá, es que ahí tiene razón, eh, es como, pero si yo le pregunto a, a, a la segunda persona que eres tú, por uh -huh. eso yo uso where, para preguntarle okay. a tú, a Hazel. Yo le pregunto uh -huh. where were you born, porque no le puedo decir uh -huh. where was I, so... Porque ahí estoy hablando a Hazel. Entonces yo le digo a Hazel, when were you born? Okay. Entonces Hazel contesta. I was born. I was born in 1992. Excellent. Very good. Thank you so much, Hazel. Can you ask question number two to someone else? Yes. Um, uh, 
es de Carlos, Carlos Coto. Where was your father born? Aún no finalizado, estoy trabajando en eso. Ah, okay. Other, other person teacher? Melanie? Melanie, when was your father born? Uh, my father was born on December 14th in, or on, I don't know, in, I don't remember the year. <laughs> um, my father was born in 1989, for example. Okay, excellent. Very good, Melanie. Can you ask question number three to someone else? Carla Mendoza, eh, when, when, when was your mother born? Uh, she was born in 1970. Okay, good. Can you ask the next question, number four, to someone else? Okay. Um, um, Cristina? Hello, Carla Mendoza. And when did you turn 13? Mm. One to send my hundred eighty three. Uh huh. I turned thirteen. Mm. I turned thirteen. Um, como está preguntando que en qué año este. Quiero ver, quiero ver, quiero ver si lo tengo. Yo cumplió los trece. Sí, sí, sí. Uh -huh. Sería one to send. Um, Want to send my only 83? Uh -huh. Okay. Sería, uh -huh. Yes. No sé si me faltó algo ahí, sí, ¿verdad? I turn, el, el, la, la, la el inicio nada más. El I inicio. turn 13. Ok. Uh -huh. In, y luego el año. Ok. I turn 13 in. En 1983. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. I, okay. Okay. Now, can you ask question number five to someone else? Hoy pregunto yo. ¿O cómo fue? Hola. Yes. Mm, when did you um? Quiero ver. Mm, Roberto Cruz está solo de oyente. Um, Cecilia Ramos. Eh, Cecilia Ramos. When did you start high school? Okay. I began to study English in 2015. Okay, excellent. Can you ask the last question to someone else? Sorry. <laughs> Um, well. When did you begin to study English? Balmore, Marroquí. When did you begin to study English?
I, I study English. Y el verbo, I. Uh, I begin to study English. Aquí está en presente porque en la pregunta no se pone en pasado, pero en la respuesta sí lo tenemos que decir el pasado. ¿Cuál es el pasado de begin? No me acuerdo. Began. I began. began. Uh -huh. uh, uh, I began to study English uh, 20... 23. Oh, this year. Excellent. 2023. Okay, good. Um, is, uh, ¿Tienen alguna duda con este ejercicio? Me gustaría que practicaran más estas preguntas y respuestas, porque todavía hay cositas que por ahí se nos eh, pasan por alto. Teacher. Uh -huh. En esa última pregunta también pudo haber respondido eh, I started. En vez de begin, eh, en vez de began, sí, I started. I, ese sí tendría que ir en pasado también. I started to study English en tal fecha. Uh -huh. Básicamente es el mismo significado en los verbos. So, yes, puedo haber usado started. Y eso es bueno, cuando de repente no sepamos una palabra, podemos buscar un, un sinónimo, ¿verdad? Uh, no, no, porque a veces eso pasa y por eso nos quedamos trabados así que no sabemos cómo decir algo, porque quiero usar esa palabra específicamente, cuando hay otra que tiene el mismo significado, son sinónimos, entonces es buena alternativa lo que usted menciona, buscar sinónimos. Si yo se me olvidó el pasado de begin, entonces usar start, started. I started to study English and tal. Yeah, excellent. Any other question? Yes, teacher, I have one. Mm -hmm. eh, para nosotros, ¿cómo se traduce la high school? High school para nosotros sería bachillerato. Ah, nice. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're welcome. Es, es un poco eh, diferente, la verdad. Allá tienen college y tienen universidad. Eh, hace Ajá, poco... Sí, porque yo veo bien diferente el sistema de educación. Sí, el college es como, digamos, cuando no tiene suficiente dinero como para empezar de ya la universidad, se va a college. Es similar pero es más barato, solo que en el college es como sacar como diplomado, nada más no la carrera, pero lo que hace la gente que va a college e, y luego cuando ya reúnen dinero o, o le sale el préstamo o beca o lo que sea, entonces se pasan a la universidad y agarran las equivalencias, digamos, la, de las materias que tenían en común en college. Uh -huh. Es similar, ah. pero, ajá, es como cuando no tienes suficiente dinero porque los estudios universitarios son súper, súper, súper caros por allá, entonces hay gente que primero va a college y después se pasa a la universidad. Uh, y antes de bachillerato, ¿cómo le podría decir? Elementary. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Elementary school. Thank you. Welcome. Y los chiquitos es primary. Primary school. Y los más chiquititos es el kindergarten. Pero no, no se usa mucho. Kindergarten is like primary school. Abarca también a, a los más chiquititos que para nosotros es kinder. Any other question? Okay. So, um, veamos. Eh... And no more questions, so we can continue. The next exercise is a listening. Okay. So this one is a listening and uh, let's see. Uh, déjenme con estar algo por aquí. 
啊、uh, ok, so this is a listening eso es para que vean que esto pues está en el eh, powerpoint que les mandé pero pues necesitamos ir a la parte del audio solo antes de hacer el listening voy a hacer el segundo chequeo de asistencia para pues eh, ya podernos quedar haciendo el ejercicio Déjenme ver. Ok. Adel Edenilson. Abigail Elizabeth. Present teacher. Okay, gracias. Okay, let's continue. Valmori Alexander. Present teacher. Okay, Carlos Emilio. Present teacher. Thank you. Carlos Humberto. Present teacher. Thank you. Luciano Emi. Present teacher. Thank you. Francisco Ernesto. Hazel Vanessa. Present. Thank you. Julissa Yamilet. Julissa no se conectó ahora. Mm, quizás no. Mm. No. Ok. Um, Carla Daniela. Present. Thank you. Carla Ivania. Thank you. Thank you. Carla Lorena. Present. Thank you. Marilina Alejandra. Mario Ernesto. Present. Thank you. Melanie Alexandra. Present. Thank you. Melissa Esther. Present. Thank you. Mirna Yanet. Present. Thank you. Roberto Emilio. Roberto Emilio. Santos Cristina. Víctor Noé. Gracias, Present. Cristina. Thank you, Present. Cristina. Thank you, Victor. Okay, let's continue. Let me close this. Okay, so we're going to move to the listening part so we can exercise that. Um, let me get ready and make that bigger for you. Okay, this is what we have to do now. In this listening, we are supposed to listen to Andy, Gail, Patrick, and Fran. These are two. What did they do last summer? Um, I know that you do not have the material printed. So you can work in your notebook and write the names of the four uh, men here, Andy, Gail, Patrick, and Fran, así como aparecen ahí. Y luego escriben cuáles de estas actividades hicieron ellos. Tenemos, um, ahí las tienen, stayed home, visited his brother, went to the beach, and then for gay we have set, saw movies, read books, and watched TV. Patrick went bike riding, went swimming, or played tennis. Frank worked in the yard, got a job, or painted the house. 
pueden copiar el, 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 nada más el cuadrito así con lo, los cuatro nombres y pueden este, poner nada más los cuadritos para poner un chequecito o lo pueden escribir todo, le puede dar tiempo. Have you finished?
Now yes. No yes, teacher. Okay, thank you for letting me know. I'll give you more time. Okay, have you finished writing? I will break the recording three times, okay? So no worries if you don't have the all the answers at the first time. So I'm going to play it three times so that you can check um, the activities that they mentioned that they did in the last summer. Page 96, exercise nine, listening. I didn't go anywhere. Listen to Andy, Gail, Patrick, and Fran. What did they do last summer? Check the correct answers. One. Hello, Andy. Did you have a good summer? Oh, I had an okay summer, I guess. I visited my brother in Vancouver. That's nice. Did you go to the beach? No, I didn't. 
It rained all summer, so we usually did things indoors. 2. Hi, Gail. How are you? Did you have a good summer? Yes, I did. Thanks. I just relaxed. Did you see any good movies? Movies? Well, no, but I read a lot of good books. 3. So, Patrick, did you do anything interesting last summer? Oh, yeah. You know how I love sports. I played tennis and rode my bike every day. Tennis and bike riding? You're a really good athlete. Yeah, well, I try. 4. Did you have a job last summer, Fran? Well, no, but I did a lot of work. What do you mean? Did you get a job? No, but my parents and I painted our house, and I worked in the yard a lot. Page 96, Exercise 9, Listening. I didn't go anywhere. Listen to Andy, Gail, Patrick, and Fran. What did they do last summer? Check the correct answers. 1. Hello, Andy. Did you have a good summer? Oh, I had an okay summer, I guess. I visited my brother in Vancouver. That's nice. Did you go to the beach? No, I didn't. It rained all summer, so we usually did things indoors. 2. Hi, Gail. How are you? Did you have a good summer? Yes, I did. Thanks. I just relaxed. Did you see any good movies? Movies? Well, no, but I read a lot of good books. 3. So, Patrick, did you do anything interesting last summer? Oh, yeah. You know how I love sports. I played tennis and rode my bike every day. Tennis and bike riding? You're a really good athlete. Yeah, well, I try. 4. Did you have a job last summer, Fran? Well, no, but I did a lot of work. What do you mean? Did you get a job? No, but my parents and I painted our house, and I worked in the yard a lot. Page 96, Exercise 9, Listening. I didn't go anywhere. Listen to Andy, Gail, Patrick, and Fran. What did they do last summer? Check the correct answers. 1. Hello, Andy. Did you have a good summer? Oh, I had an okay summer, I guess. I visited my brother in Vancouver. That's nice. Did you go to the beach? No, I didn't. It rained all summer, so we usually did things indoors. 2. Hi, Gail. How are you? Did you have a good summer? Yes, I did. Thanks. I just relaxed. Did you see any good movies? Movies? Well, no, but I read a lot of good books. 3. So, Patrick, did you do anything interesting last summer? Oh, yeah. You know how I love sports. I played tennis and rode my bike every day. Tennis and bike riding? You're a really good athlete. Yeah, well, I try. 4. Did you have a job last summer, Fran? Well, no, but I did a lot of work. What do you mean? Did you get a job? No, but my parents and I painted our house, and I worked in the yard a lot. Did you get all the answers? I think this was I guess. easy. Okay, let's check. Oh, what do you have for number one, Andy? 
what is Andy going to do? Or what did Andy do? Uh, visited, visited his brother. Visited his brother. Visited his brother. Only that? Yeah. Stay at home. Um, home. Oh, visited his brother. Yes. And we could say it stayed home because they said that they didn't go anywhere, right? So mm -hmm. it's valid. Uh, number two, Gail. Read a good book. She read some good books. Uh-huh. Read books. And number three? Played tennis. And went bike riding. Uh-huh. Went bike riding and played tennis. Played tennis. Mm -hmm. And number four, Frank? Find, Find the house. house. Yeah. And okay, paint. so you say work in the yard and paint the house. Paint the house. Yes, correct. Frank, work in the yard and painted the house. So that was a piece of cake. I hope that you have a very, very good weekend. Remember to work in the platform. Acuérdense, por favor, traten de completar lo más que puedan la plataforma. Ya nos quedan solamente tres clases para terminar. Así es que, pues, hay que um, avanzar lo más que se pueda. Solo faltan tres clases el día de hoy, el one on one para Mirna y Anet. Si tiene alguna pregunta o alguna duda que, que resolver, se puede quedar unos minutitos ahorita después de la clase. Y los demás, but see you um, on Monday. And I hope that you rest this weekend. See you. Thank you, teachers. Yeah. See you. Thank you, teacher. Good night. Good night. Good night, teacher. Good night. Sleep well. Hi, Janet. Hi, teacher. Hello, teacher. Hola, ¿cómo va? ¿Cómo se ha sentido? Mm, bastante bien. Bastante bien. ¿Algún tema que sienta sí. eh, dificultad que quisiera que repasemos o alguna pregunta específica sobre algún tema? Mm, solo... Solo una pregunta, este, ¿cómo identificar los verbos si son regulares o irregulares? Eh, pues fíjese que eso, mmm, los regulares son los que siguen la regla del ED y todo ah, eh, eso, ¿verdad? El, el spelling que estuvimos viendo, pero uh -huh. no, no hay como decirle este es irregular, este es regular, eso es solo con práctica. Por ejemplo, la lista que les mandé ahora tiene más de 60 verbos que son irregulares. Eh, y son bien comunes entonces esa lista sería buena que la repasen porque eso solo es con práctica y memorizándolos, es la única manera, memorizar no. cuáles eh, pero así como decirle eh, para saber si es regular o si es irregular, no hay una, una no. no hay algo que le pueda decir solamente que los, ir, los irregulares no siguen el ED entonces, uh -huh. pero ¿cómo lo sabemos? Eh, aprendiéndolos en el camino, memorizándolos, los irregulares. Los regulares, pues ya manejamos bastante, ¿verdad? Y pues los irregulares más comunes los hemos visto ahora, que es eh, go, que es pa, went, have, que se convierte en had, y así eh, take, que se hace took. Y así con la práctica es que uno va diciendo, ah, este es irregular, este es regular, pero no, no hay como una donde le pueda decir este, así va a saber si es o no es. Uh, bueno. Y es solo práctica. Entonces, por eso les decía que esa lista sería un buen comienzo para que empiecen como a memorizarla o leerla de vez en cuando, porque esa solo tiene irregulares. Uh -huh. Y es irregular porque cambia a was y were. No se le puede agregar ed y ya es pasado. Eh, con ese uh -huh. empieza la lista. Um, vaya. Uh -huh. Solamente esa es mi duda. 
Ok, algo más que desea agregar. Eh, ¿Cómo siente que va la clase? ¿Siente que le está funcionando? ¿Algo que estemos haciendo? ¿Dónde siente que aprende más? Um, me parece bien la metodología. Solo de, de quizás agregar este más conversaciones, quizás como para... Más conversaciones como las que le he puesto últimamente. Ah, sí, sí, sí. Ok, las voy a seguir agregando estos días que nos faltan. Uh -huh, está bien. Son tres. <ríe> Ay, ya, ya están cansaditos, pero sí. Ya luego van a tener un su mini receso antes que empiece el otro módulo para que puedan descansar. Sí. Pero pues sí. felicitarla, porque usted siempre está, es rarísimo no verla que esté ya conectada y siempre está participando. Así que gracias. pues la felicito y la invito que siga así. Vaya, gracias. ¿Algo más sí. que desear agregar, Janet, antes que terminemos la sesión? No, no, solamente. Sí, gracias. gracias. Okay. Thank you so much for staying. I let you rest. Sé que está cansadita y pues ya es hora de descansar, ¿verdad? Espero que tenga un excelente sí. fin de semana y la veo el lunes, si Dios quiere. Bueno, bueno gracias. Eh, buenas noches. Buenas noches.